cities of the future will be extremely overcrowded. GM's answer to this is the Envy concept. It's a two-seater pod, and we were recently invited by Vauxhall to have a ride. Take a look. So, it's, I mean, it's obviously quite smooth to start off. What, what sort of speed can this vehicle do? It can, it can run 25 miles per hour uh, at top speed. It turns on a circle, obviously. It can turn in its own footprint. Yeah. And, it, and it, can, it has a range of about 25 miles. So who's this vehicle for? Whoever likes it. <laughs> uh, it, it would be, you know, to, to solve urban mobility issues. Uh, if you've ever been to Shanghai, China, or any place in Asia, any of the major cities, there's just so many people and there's, it's just so difficult to get around. And they've got these huge buses and cars and, uh, you know, now that they've got disposable income, yeah. they're buying these, these things. And there's two problems. There's problems to where to drive them and problems where to park them. <laughs> because there's just no space for either one. Uh, so this, this is simply something that, that might be a solution mm -hmm. in, in Shanghai. Or, or London, or New York, or any other major city that's confronted with the same exact problems. So you, you know, you can pull into a car park space, very tight like this. Just, just turn straight around like that. And just turn straight around. <laughs> that's remarkable. And so, uh, how much would this sort of thing cost? About $10,000 US dollars. Yeah. So 8,000 pounds, somewhere in that range, I'm guessing. And uh, what are the plans to bring it to production? Well, at, at, at the moment, we're working on another version of this, and there might be something in the very near future being rolled out in, in you know, some, some test bed cities. Yeah. And once, once that's established, it's probably a matter of, you know, from now, probably about 10 years, I would say. Everybody says, oh, why so long? You know, it seems like a long time. Uh, but it's really, it's really not that long when you think of all the things that need to be put in place. And it, uh, certainly, it could be it could be you know brought to market much quicker if, if somebody's willing to put a lot of money into it. I would assume. Yeah, and it's running on two wheels now, yeah. so that's like Segway technology. Exactly. So yeah, you're you're on a balancing machine right now. Um, you know, and if you want to, you can lean forward. You can yeah. throw your weight about, and it, it just balances. It just takes keeps you upright. Right. right. And um, you're obviously controlling it right now. Um, right. And you're pulling backwards to slow down, pushing forwards to go forwards. Right. Um, but it has autonomous drive, that's right? Yes, this vehicle has demonstrated autonomous drive many, many times. It was in the, it was in the World Expo. It was one of the ones that ran every day mm -hmm. um, in the Expo. So right now we're not going to demonstrate any of those features because, first of all, we're indoors and we, we need GPS. And secondly, if we even if we were outdoors, I don't have all the setup. I don't have the other vehicles for it to communicate with to, to show off the V2V capabilities. So, yeah. you know, this this is just really to show you guys, you know, give you a feel and, and give you uh, a visual on what the the, the real vehicles could look like. Mm -hmm. And again, this is just a concept. So, what the real vehicles may look like may may look a bit different, but. It, it shows you that when you when you have vehicles that aren't designed to crash, the freedom of design and the, the, the new bold looks and the, and the things that you can do with them and make them much lighter weight, much smaller than, than a vehicle that is designed to crash. So that's that's one of the main things that you know you really want to focus on. Uh, the focus really isn't supposed to be on the balancing aspects of it. Well, it's certainly cool. Mm. Uh, but the focus is on the, the talking to the vehicle to vehicle talking to each other. Right. Well, the the the, the, v, the V2V stuff, the autonomous stuff, you know, because V2V can be used even on vehicles that aren't autonomous. So, you know, you might imagine that if you're driving about and the car can warn you that something's, you know, happening, you know, 15 minutes up the road, whatever, because it's talking to the other cars around it, and and uh, and and that can be integrated maybe with the brakes, so maybe autonomy at the at the most mild form of it. You know, these are things that that you know you could do right now in in your everyday car with a device that's like a like a um, I think you guys call them uh, nav nav sats or sat sat -nav. navs. Yeah. You know, think of something about the size of a of a sat nav that that plops onto your vehicle. Hooks into the a, what we call the ALDL, so that's where the the CAN bus and everything links into the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And now it can it can send commands across the CAN 
just like all the other devices can, and it can you know actuate the brakes if you want, or you know. So imagine higher end cars that have automated cruise control where they do braking and throttle. This could be something that just is added on to it, and you know the cars around you that uh, that have the V to V stuff are talking to it. Mm. That's like a real high level view of how it can work in the near term mm. and how it more than likely will work in the near term. Yeah. So this technology goes on sort of standard. Uh, or vehicles as we know it at the moment, and then eventually right. we start seeing vehicles like this. Right, but at the same time, the same technology that, that allows us to do that can be integrated into a mass fleet of these things in a, in a city or an urban setting and, and be used to help the resolution of the autonomous driving, driving down the cost of you know, sensors and things like that, so you don't need these really, really expensive, robust sensors. You have a much cheaper solution because you have cheaper sensors, and I've got a whole bunch of them out there in the world, and uh, it's, it's just another solution to a, to a problem. It's maybe not all the answers wrapped up in the one thing, but it's, it's to get people thinking in that direction. Okay. And I think it effectively does that. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you, William. Cheers.